Hello, my name is Patricia, and I'd like to welcome you to today's podcast, the one on synesthesia. When I decided upon this topic, I was thinking primarily about writing haiku using the methodology of synesthesia, which I think is quite challenging. Here's a quick reminder of what we're trying to achieve with this methodology. It's from Jane Reichold. She says, it's the technique of sense switching. To speak of the sensory aspect of a thing and then to change to another sensory organ. Simple, eh? But as the submissions rolled in, it became clear that there was another interpretation of the topic. I took this definition from a children's website, which said, Imagine that when you see a city skyline, you taste blackberries. Or maybe when you hear a violin, you feel a tickle on your left knee. Perhaps you're completely convinced that Wednesdays are light red. I don't have this myself, but I thought it would be interesting to take submissions from people who wanted to write about this phenomenon. Let's start, as we usually do, with work that's been previously published. You'll find details of those publications in the show notes. Alan Summers Starlight, the sharp tang of thorn. Robert Spies Muttering thunder, the bottom of the river scattered with clams. Mariela Gonzalez Bright sun, the cocoa dries to the song of a woman. John Hawkhead Gathering storm, a raven's gravel call scrapes over black ice. Geoffrey Vinker Jazz club, her smoky lips kiss the martini glass. Eric Arthen Yellow tulips, the smell of splashing water. Dinah E. Cox Everywhere, the scent of green after rain. And now over to you, the writers of the group, with work you've written for the podcast today. You can read the works and some links to the poets on the show notes. Thank you very much. David A. Estringle Lip to lip, I pray for oblivion. Whiskey's white fire. Patrick Stevens Old letters burning sense of tears, sense of laughter. First irises show through. The old man reaches out, touching the musky perfume of the dying sun. John Hawkhead Lightning strike, a scent of burnt earth in the rain. Constance Borg Silver gull gliding against blue, intercom ping. Mark Gilbert Lapping waves, a squirt of vanilla in a sugar cone, please. Andrew Sire Thirst for adventure captures colourful knowledge with warm memories. James Young The Spice Road Tastes change colour. Neon hot dogs Overcooked onions sizzle Mustard Hifsa Ashraf Rosary beads The rise and fall of his heartbeat Roger Watson Yellow Days The Sky Growing Through the Trees Catherine E. Winnick Crimson Feathers The Scent of Perfumes and Black Lace Peter Draper She Leaves the Elevator With the Scent of Stale Tobacco Professor R. K. Singh Her fingers I taste in the orange she peels. Wrapped in fog, 
The Flying Plane, Seen by Sound Robin Rich Now Robin, a fellow Brit, is writing for us for the first time. Although he's a writer new to the podcast, he is an experienced haiku poet and already has a book of his work published. Robin advocates that we try and have a unique voice. For myself, I'm still working on mine. But let's hear from Robin in his unique voice. Summer day, all alone on the beach, ice cream tastes of rain. My lizard swallows a bee, sweetly done. Wayne Kingston Song touch, chord imagination soars, dream horizon. Kim Russell Blue bass notes, shadows fill the basement of misspent youth. Unbearable heat, the lawnmower releases memories of rain. Julie Bloss Kelsey joins us from the US and is writing for us for the first time. I can absolutely identify with the way she began writing haiku. Nursing the first of her children, she would sit in a big armchair and look out the window and write haiku in her head, repeating each poem as a mantra until she could commit it to paper. That's how I fall asleep at night. But sadly, some of my best work exists only in my dreams. Julie suggests Twitter is a good way to meet fellow haiku poets. Try using the haiku hashtag, find haiku that you enjoy, follow the poet and see who that poet follows. Apparently Julie's met many haiku friends that way. And you know, a lot of us have Twitter handles and they're often in the show notes, so why not make sure we follow one another? Let's hear from Julie. On the edge of sleep, the black and white checkerboard of a dog's bark. Delicious circles of contentment, peach crumble. M. Shane Pruitt Street preacher, belching out his virtue last night's garlic. John McManus The smell of fried bacon, I put the newspaper down. Makeout session, the hiss of a pan boiling over. Wendy C. Bialik Beach All day watching waves crash Eyes open, eyes closed The silver turquoise taste of mother of pearl Sea in a shell Now we're heading off to Australia to meet with Pearl for the first time She was inspired to write haiku by reading the haiku yearbook In this book a number of friends dedicated a year to writing a haiku a day and mailed them to one another. At the end of the year, they had a collection which they published. Now, I've not read it, but I think I'll put it on my Christmas list. Thanks for the recommendation, Pearl. Pearl likes a haiku which is brief, succinct and has insightful imagery. So let's hear from Pearl. Sky Blue the clear taste of winter. Green Tuesday, the moon readies its next quarter. Robert Horobin. Ocean sunset, orange blossoms in the tea. Isabel Caves. Cool breeze, the mandarin tree rustles in a rain puddle. Were any of you on Google Plus, in particular the Haiku Nook group? It was extremely important to me in my first efforts at Haiku, and I miss it. Well, today we're joined by Fractald, himself an ex-member of the group. He's contributed in the early days of the podcast, but this is the first time he's joined us on one of our themes. He calls himself a journeyman of Haiku and its related forms. You can find him in that poetic rabbit hole encountering extremely knowledgeable and talented entities guiding his way in Wonderland. 
or alternatively, at Twitter or his blog. Intense yellow, I pucker my lips while salivating. Truck horn, an ocean drowns the street. Ricky Rivers Jr. Nape of neck, horrid sounds raise the hairs. A tickle produces tears. Laughter. Richard Bailey. Springtime in the north, ice melting rapidly, scent of gasoline. Olympia Hinamatsuri Babu. Shiny summer day, a blue breeze dances beneath her tears. Joan Barrett. Yunnan altar, pine needles snap at frosty prayers. A little something from me. Cottage garden, grandma's scent in the honeysuckle. Craig Kittner. Flowing birdsong, the moss-marked path of rainwater. If you haven't seen the most recent Haiku Dialogue page on the Haiku Foundation, Craig is guest editing again. He's been looking at various aspects of Haiku methodology. So far, Brevity, the 575 format, and this coming week, he's looking at Monoku. I know many of you are interested in this method. So check it out on Wednesday and find out what's coming next. Well, I'm sorry to say that's it for today. Thank you to everyone who is listening and who's written for today's episode. Virtual hugs to all of you. In a couple of weeks, I hope to have a special episode of a different sort, as long as the technology allows. And to be honest with you, it's been a real pain today. But if it works, I hope you'll really enjoy it. Our next theme is flowers. The deadline is the 9th of September. Email your submissions, just to be sure that I get them. You'll find the contacts on the Poetry P website. I hope you've enjoyed today's podcast. Let me know, good or bad, by email. I love to hear from you. Take care now, and keep writing. If there's something missing on the show notes, just send me an email via the Poetry P website and I'll put it right. Ciao!